The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah when he said, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Now John wore a garment of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist. And his food was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him with Jerusa to him Jerusalem, and all Judea, and all the region about the Jordan. And they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit that befits repentance, and do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father, for I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now, the axe is laid to the root of the, of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with the fire. His winnowing fork is in hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the, into the granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, today, is the second Sunday of Advent. And as a family of God's people, we continue to move in the hope of receiving the fulfillment of God's promise through our ancestors in faith. Hence, this Sunday, the church reminds us that while we are sustained by the great hope of the Lord's coming, we have to heed the voice of the one crying, in, crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord and make his path straight. One thing is common to the readings of this Sunday. They are all anchored on the prophecy of Isaiah about the Messiah. In the first reading, Isaiah prophesied of the Lord's coming in unequivocal terms. 
he equally described the qualities and marks of the promised king. First, he shall be filled with the Spirit of God. He shall be a man of integrity, judge with equity and righteousness, and respect his people. What a great hope the prophet brings us this season. Isaiah reminds us that the future is bright in Christ our Messiah. He promises that he shall be different from other kings and that his reign shall bring us freedom from evil, oppression, and sin. His reign shall bring us peace with God and with one another. His reign shall strengthen our unity despite our diversities. The prophet writes, The wolf shall live with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lion cub will feed together and the little child shall lead them. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountains. My dear brothers and sisters, indeed, we, if we welcome Christ sincerely in our hearts, this will not sound utopian as many think it does. Our world will be a place where we do not have to live in fear, in fear of one another, and where the strong will no longer oppress the weak. In the second reading, Paul continues with the same message of hope for all nations. He reminds us, whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. It is the same hope that sustains us this season. It will keep us united in faith, united in prayer, and united in love until what is written in the scriptures is fulfilled at the end of this season. Hence, following the scriptures, Paul exhorts us to rejoice and praise God for what he is about to do. And he concludes with the same message from Isaiah. The root of Jesse shall come, the one who rises to rule the nations. In him the nations shall hope. In today's Gospel, my dear brothers and sisters, the appearance of John the Baptist is also a message of hope that the coming of the Messiah is near, is close at hand. However, it brings an important message to us. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. Also, he employed the prophecy of Isaiah to exhort us to prepare 
the way of the Lord and make his path straight. The message of John the Baptist this Sunday underscores the importance of this season. It is a time not just for material preparation. Instead, it is a time of retreat and deep reflection on the mystery God is about to reveal to the world. It is a time of cleaning up, of cleansing. It is a time of leveling the rough edges of our lives with the hope of receiving our Lord in a beautiful state of mind and body. It suffices to remind us here that John's message is another way of telling us that without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Repentance, reconciliation, and holiness of heart are the prerequisites for justifying our hope at the end of this season. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, let us rid ourselves of everything hindering us from receiving Christ this season. In light of this, the church encourages us to take advantage of the sacrament of reconciliation to prepare ourselves to receive our Lord and King. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is closed at hand. Amen. The Lord be with you.